Here are all the channel strips I salvaged from the FAL 12 channel audio mixer we explored in the last video. Link in the description. Yesterday I felt ambitious, so while watching Big Clive's live stream, I took one of these channel strips and, as you can see by all the notes I took on the board, I reverse engineered it. This is the circuit that I came up with, and because this looks kind of messy, here is a nicer copy of it. So let's take a closer look at this. Let's first take a closer look at the pinout of the 741 operational amplifier, because this is the operational amplifier that was used throughout this circuit. Now, this operational amplifier dates back to 1968. It is one of the first operational amplifiers ever. It's one single op-amp inside an 8-pin dual inline case. Pin 1 is up here. There is the notch. You can see how the operational amplifier inside is connected to the pins outside. And in addition, we have three more pins. These two are for an external zero offset adjustment, and this one is not connected. Now, the external zero offset adjustment is optional. If you don't want it, you just leave these pins open. And that's what they have done in this mixer. So. These three pins are not connected to anything. All the other pins are connected, as it says in the schematic. I should also mention all the 741 operational amplifiers in this mixer had a date code of 7701, so that very much suggests that this mixer was built at some point in 1977. So, this is the circuit of one of the channel strips. This is where it begins at the inputs in the back. And the first one is the balanced low impedance input. So, we have a positive input and a negative input, and of course, a connection to ground. Now, the first interesting thing is the positive input has a DC blocking capacitor, the negative input doesn't, which doesn't really make any sense because you could have DC coming in on both of these. That's a bit strange. Now, the 680 ohm resistor in series is what provides the low input impedance. And here is the first operational amplifier, and this is set up to convert the balanced signal here into an unbalanced signal here. And that runs down to over here to the unbalanced input, which of course is only one input. And the interesting part is that uh, there is a switch built into this jack. So as you plug something into the unbalanced input, the balanced input is disconnected right here and you have the input down here, which goes through another DC blocking capacitor and another resistor, 47 kilo ohm. This is what provides the high input impedance seen right here. And then we have the preamplifier. This is done with the second operational amplifier. This is kind of a less than ideal solution right here. The gain potentiometer, which is right here, see I have the inputs marked red and all the adjustments marked yellow. The gain adjusts the feedback across the operational amplifier. Now this is less than ideal because if this potentiometer gets scratchy and loses contact, you don't have any more feedback across the operational amplifier. 
So in theory, it starts amplifying at the maximum amplification it can do. In reality, that doesn't happen. This, uh, this whole thing is most likely just going to go unstable. Anyway, moving on, we have DC blocking capacitor here. And this is where we enter the next stage. This is where we have all the tone controls. And now, right here, before the tone controls, is where the foldback branches off. So that comes up here through this foldback potentiometer and goes out via a 47 kilo ohm resistor to the foldback bus connection. And all the connections to the bus I have marked in green. Down here are the tone controls. And the interesting part is that uh, the tone controls, the way they act, the frequency spectrum in which they act is different from how they have been arranged in this circuit. So we have the treble control, the bass control, and then moving on to over here, we have the lower mid-range and the upper mid-range controls. Aside from that, this is a uh, relatively standard circuit right here. So we have the treble and bass adjustments, and they have an operational amplifier here. We have the lower mid-range with an operational amplifier there, and then we have basically this same circuit all over again, but with different component values right there for the upper mid-range, with the exception of this uh, 680 ohm resistor that goes via capacitor to ground. So this is the tone control section, and let's not go too much into detail right there with that. Now, following the tone control section is where the echo bus branches off. So we have a 10 kilo ohm adjustment for the echo via a 47K resistor that feeds out to the echo bus. So this is where the difference between echo and foldback is. The foldback, the sort of monitoring output, is not affected by the tone controls. The echo output is affected by the tone controls. So they are not essentially the same as I said in the first video about the mixer. There is a difference. Now moving over here to the end of the circuit, this is where the peak LED circuit branches off. So that is connected resistor, diode, into a little NPN transistor, and that switches the peak LED. So if the signal voltage gets high enough to turn on this transistor, the peak LED comes on. So this is actually a nice little circuit, which uh, I will remember because, uh, you know, you will also find solutions where they, you know, basically connect the audio signal straight into the LED via some extra circuitry, which is less than ideal. This is nicely buffered by this transistor. Now, this is unfortunately where a little mystery is going to remain. The power supply to the LED comes via a bus connection. So I would assume this is sort of a, a low voltage supply line just for the peak LEDs. We move on down here and we get into the prefade listen switch. So you can turn this on and if you do, the signal right here is fed out via another 47K resistor to the PFL bus connection. And this really is pre-fader listening, because right there is the fader. This is it. Now, I was not uh, quite sure, is this a linear or a logarithmic fader, um, simply because the faders are marked with uh, 10KB. And now, 
B usually stands for linear characteristic, as far as I know. But then again, they changed the letters around over the years. So maybe it's a logarithmic fader. I don't know. And the output of this fader then comes out to the pan control. And this is a very interesting potentiometer in that um, it has two sections. It's a dual potentiometer. And the way I've drawn it is the way it has been done. So the upper end of this section is connected to ground and the lower end is connected to the signal. On the other section, the upper end is connected to the signal and the lower end is connected to ground. That's how they uh, do this uh, pan adjustment. And the potentiometer is a very interesting component because one section is logarithmic and then because the other section is connected in reverse, it also has to work in reverse. So it has a reverse logarithmic characteristic. And because we do have the additional resistance of this pan control in series with the output over here, rather than a 47k resistor, we have only a 39k resistor. And via those resistors, the signal connects to the uh, bus left or right. I have not uh, determined which, which one is which but I guess you get the point how this works. So there you have it. That is the circuit of one of these channel strips. This is how it works. Now, I have only reverse engineered this all after I tore down the whole entire mixer, so a few things will remain a mystery. For example, how does this uh, bus connection, what kind of a voltage does this carry. Um, also, I have not determined the main supply voltages, which I've drawn up there. So we have a positive, negative, and a ground connection going to the bus. And that, of course, connects to each one of the operational amplifiers. I have just drawn these positive and negative supply connections to make this whole schematic a little more simple. Also, we will never know if uh, maybe there was, you know, after all these signals have been combined together in this bus, was there another output amplifier or was this all combined together and then went straight out a connector in the back? I would assume there was at least some sort of a buffer operational amplifier somewhere, but... That's all theorizing, because it has all been torn apart. So, there you have it. That is the circuit of one of the channel strips of the 1977 FAL 12-channel audio mixer. Thank you for watching.